In this problem, we're told that Farmer Bob and his horse, Flash, jump a 100 meter wide canyon. And the flight through the air takes five seconds. And we have to find the initial velocity. And we're told specifically to find the magnitude and the direction, or the angle. So we need to know how fast he's moving and, and in what direction that he had to jump in order to make this leap across this canyon that's 100 meters wide. So here's Farmer Bob on his horse. And he's jumped at some initial velocity, V0, and he's moving in this parabolic path, and he lands over there 100 meters away. And what we're trying to find is this initial velocity vector. We need to know how many meters per second it is and the angle here. I'll call the angle theta. How much that vector is inclined above the horizontal. And we can find that just on this information, the, the width here and the time in the air. Now it turns out for this problem, it doesn't matter which one we do first, the horizontal or the vertical. Um, I'll do the horizontal here. And the horizontal is really easy. There's no horizontal acceleration. So this big equation that we typically use horizontally, x is x0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. If there's no acceleration, then that term is gone. And if we call the starting point the initial position 0, which is typical, then that term goes away too. So this whole equation just reduces to x equals vt, distance is velocity times time. And we can solve that for v0. v0 is x over t. That's 100 meters over 5 seconds. And that comes out to 20 meters per second. And you might think, hey, we're done. We just found v0. That's what we're supposed to find, the initial velocity. But notice that we are doing the horizontal. In a projectile problem, you have to do the horizontal and vertical independently. So what we just found right here, this 20 meters per second, is the horizontal component of V0. If you look at this picture again, V0 is up and to the right. So it has two components. I'll call them V0x, that's how far to the right it is, and V0y, that's how high up it goes. And what we just found here was V0x. In order to find V0, we need to find both components, the horizontal and the vertical, and then combine them to find, to find V0. So now let's do the vertical, and that will give us V0y. So the vertical, let's think about what we know. I'm going to let up be positive for this problem. That means the acceleration, which is always down, is negative and it's 9.8 meters per second squared. And I know that, that the time is 5 seconds across. Now let's think about this flight from the start to the peak. If we just think start to the peak, then we know the time for that is going to be 2.5 seconds. So I'll just take, a, take note here. I'm going to consider motion from the start to the peak. And so T ends up being half the given time. So if it's a five second flight for the whole whole jump, then just to the peak is 2.5 seconds. And the reason I think about the time just from the start to the peak is I know something about the peak. I know that at the peak, the vertical velocity is zero. He's still moving to the right at this point, but he's not moving up or down at all. He's moving tangent, he's moving in a direction tangent to this path. So if he's jumping like this right at the peak, his velocity is directly to the right horizontal. So there's no vertical velocity. So I'll write the initial velocity is what I don't know, but the final velocity is zero. And by the final velocity, I mean the velocity at the peak, because I'm thinking about the motion from the start to the peak. And then I can use this equation v is equal to v0 plus at. And I don't know the initial velocity, but I do know the acceleration, I do know the time, and I do know the final velocity. 
So let's solve this for v0. Just rearrange this algebraically and I get v0 is v minus at and put in those numbers. The final velocity is 0. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared and then the time is 2.5 seconds and that seconds cancels out with one of those two leaving me with meters per second and these negative signs are going to cancel out and I'll end up with a positive number for V0 and if you set your problem up carefully the units and the positive and negative signs should always work out and this comes out to 24.5 meters per second now again here we were dealing with the vertical motion so this initial velocity that we just found is the vertical component of the initial velocity right over here this v0y so now we know v0x and I'm going to take note that this is v0x and v0y so I'm going to put a little x right here v0x and a little y right here v0y now I'll combine those two so I'm going to scroll down here to get a little bit more room and let's combine these two. I'll draw a little picture. V0x is to the right, V0y is up, and they combine as vectors to give me V0 at a certain angle theta. And you should be able to see that if this side is V0y, then this side is V0y. And we know these numbers. The V0 is going to end up being the hypotenuse of this right triangle so I know that V0 squared has to be 20 squared plus 24.5 squared just using those numbers I got for the X and Y components and applying the Pythagorean theorem and you square those, add them up, take the square root and V0 comes out to be 31.6 meters per second and then the angle you should be able to see that the tangent of theta tangent is always opposite over adjacent so that's going to be v0y that's the side opposite theta over v0x so tangent of theta is going to be 24.5 over 20 so theta is the inverse tangent of 24.5 over 20 and you pull out your calculator and if it's set in degree mode when you type that in you get an answer of 50.8 degrees so this is your answer 31.6 meters per second at an angle of 50.8 degrees above the horizontal